afternoon, everybody. Pastor again. Tonight, we come on not for Bible study, but I'm going to bring a word that is a word from the Lord. I want to thank Rashad for being with me again tonight. Help me out. Uh, I want to begin out tonight's service with a word of prayer. Our Father, we come to thee. Again, thank you for another day and another hour. Father, we ask that you continuously watch over us and keep us. And even in the midst of this pandemic, and God, we know that you got all power in your hands. We ask you to bless us tonight as the word go forth during this season of Thanksgiving. We ask you, O oh God, to use us, all those who are on tonight on our Facebook page and on tonight. Please be with them, guide them, and bless them. Bless Galilee in a continuous manner, in a very special way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to thank God for all of you again tonight who have come. Tonight, I, uh, last week, I made a decision that uh, we're going on through the holidays and uh, Shad's going to be here with me and uh, we're going to bring we're going to bring our Bible study continuously all the way through the holidays. Tonight, though, I want to give you a word from the Lord. Let us begin. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good. I just want to thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. From the 107th number of Psalms, we begin verse 1 and read verse 1 and verse 2. The psalmist said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. And I couldn't, I couldn't just stop right there. So much packed in that one verse, but I want to add verse 2. It says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the the enemy. I want to talk about say so. Say so. We're going to tie this in. I know this is Thanksgiving. I know a lot of the mothers and the ladies, all y'all let it go and imagine some men too uh, getting the turkey ready and everything. But tonight I just want to talk about say so, if you don't mind. From what I have read in this passage of or these passages that I read for your hearing. The psalmist is apparently concerned about certain things being expressed. Not only that, but about certain people expressing them. According to the report and according to the psalmist, there's obviously some reports that the redeemed should be making. According to the report, the psalmist informs us that there are some statements that the redeemed ought to be making. There are some testimonies that the redeemed should be giving. According to the psalmist here, 
there's some witnessing that the redeemed should be doing. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Our religion, Galilee, is, is, is a say-so religion. Our religion encompasses the whole person. It impacts every part of our being. It impacts not only our walk, but it also impact, impacts our talk. And when you've been positively impacted by the spirit of a living God, no one has to coerce you, coerce you to say so. The scripture informs us here that the psalmist was concerned. There were some things that needed to be said. But the psalmist restricts who should be saying it. And, pay, and he placed serious restrictions upon those who should say it. There are some things that the movement ought to be saying, but not everybody is qualified to do the talking, according to the psalmist. And I'm sure that, that there are those of you that will agree with me that one thing that hurting the Christian movement today is the fact that uh, there, there, there are some folk talking who are not qualified to talk. That the qualification is not, you can't rest not in education qualifications according to the psalmist rest not in the amount of success that one has experienced in life. It rests not on the amount of money that you may have amassed or accumulated in your bank account. Your qualifications rest not in our family background, rest not in our material possessions. The qualifications Galilee is listed by the psalmist. It said that we must be redeemed. Amen. Got to be redeemed. Now, 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 understand, don't you do a lot of talking if you haven't been redeemed. Amen. You see, when you go to talking, folk go to watching you're walking. And if you're talking and haven't been redeemed, there'll be some defects in your walking. And so the psalmist has concurred before you go to talking. Make sure or make certain that you've been redeemed. Because folk are going to see whether or not your walk lined up with your talk. Amen. But he says here, let the redeem, the redeem. Galilee, I am redeemed, not ashamed of it. Tell anybody where I go, how one, how does one become redeemed, Reverend? Well, he or she must fall out with their wicked way. He or she must come to the recognition that and the realization that, that they are lost, then become godly sorry in repentance for their sins, and turn from their wicked ways, invite Christ to come in and tell him, if you will, Lord, there's been an empty room in my heart, and I put a lot of stuff in there that I wouldn't fit. And I come to to the conclusion that you are the only thing that will fit in that empty space in my heart. Come on in, Jesus. Extend him the invitation and you'll discover that sooner than right now and quicker than at once. When you open your door and let him in, he's there. When you open it, he's already stepping in. When you repent of your sins, accept Christ as your Savior 
you are redeemed. Amen? I, I, I must tell you that, that, that we have not been redeemed to simply wear tight. We have not been redeemed to simply boast about our redemption. But redemption, listen to me well, carries responsibility. Let me say that again. Redemption, redemption carries responsibility. The psalmist remind us that the text that one of those responsibilities is that we got to say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Notice, if you will, the opening of this psalm. The psalm is open with an exhortation for praise and thanksgiving. Listen at him. He said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let me say that one more time. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Now, now notice, if you will, the enthusiasm that seasons verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. But obviously, the psalmist here experienced something between verse 1 and verse 2. Theologians suggest that evidently when the psalmist exhorted Israel to give thanks unto the Lord, the psalmist was met with a disappointing response. Notice, he said that, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Then he said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Have you ever been, have you ever been only one excited? Have you ever been in a case where it appears that you were the only one beaming with enthusiasm? Seeing those that those that have ever been around some folk that come try to put your fire out come with the purpose of quenching any enthusiasm to dash or to pounce on any kind of exuberance. The psalmist theologian suggests met here in this text with a disappointing melancholy response. Some of them, Thomas Aquinas, says possibility said a little something. Mediocre they become lackadaisical. Some of them said a little something, but it had no enthusiasm. It was evidently so disappointing to the psalmist until he followed one verse with verse two and tend to start child of Israel for their failure and negligence to respond exciting about God. He said, here, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom has redeemed us from the hand of the enemy? And you know, even I run into, there are a lot of dry folk. There are some dry crowd. Just like they are that day we have some dry folk today. They don't have a praise agenda. They came to church. They showed up for worship. When worship leader stood up, he stood up and said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endure forever. Thou, they got sour. Now, 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 Today, you can tell folk in the midst of a pandemic, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, 
for he is good. Well, Reverend, you mean to tell me that I'm about to get put out of my house? Yes. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. My house no do, my car no do, all my bills are behind, and you tell me, Reverend, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Yes, he is. He's still good, and for his mercy and just do it forever. I thought about it. I thought about it, even though the storms that we've been through. Even the hard times we have had in our life. I know right now we're in the midst of a pandemic. But even in the midst, in the midst of our pandemic, people are dying every day. People are getting sick every day. But I can stand tonight, when the night before Thanksgiving. And say, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. What I'm trying to tell you is that you ought to have, be excited. How do I get excited? I get excited with my relationship with God. It ought to be some um in your life. Do I have a witness here? If there are any uh, in your religion, somebody know what I'm talking about. Feel for the brother or sister who is in a marriage that there is no um. Uh. You ought to have some um uh, in your life. I, 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 I'm, I'm glad that even Sister Coleman and I have been together almost 50 years, and I still got some um. Uh. Somebody help me now. And I'm glad today that we can get right church and we're going to get ready to get out of here. You ought to have some feeling in you. You ought to have some excitement in you. Even in the midst of trials and tribulation. Many of us are like in the book of Ezekiel where there were very dry bones. The worship leader here in the psalmist, there was little enthusiasm. He spoke to them. And the psalm goes on. He said, now if anybody ought to be saying so, Israel, you ought to say so. Israel, if anything, ring your bell. Jehovah ought to ring your bell. Israel, as God had been so good to you. If anything, light your fire. Yahweh ought to light your fire. He went back. He goes on to recount the history. He goes on to walk Israel back through some history. And you know we all, I don't care who you are, we all got some history. And if the truth were told, we all, like now, your history will reveal that there was a time that you used to have some run over shoes. History will reveal that sometime we didn't have nothing but two pair of shoes. One pair of Sunday shoes and one pair of school shoes. History, when you look back, all of us got history. Now we have a big wardrobe. We didn't have much coming up as a little boy. But one thing about it, mom and them kept us food on the table. History will reveal now that we're wearing Gucci's. We're wearing all these different type of name brand. But if you look back in all our lives, we look back when we didn't have much. It takes them back he took them back here to the deliverance from bondage in Egypt. He reminded them, my Christian friend, that there was a time when they were in bondage. 
He reminds them that, that all of us, and he reminds us today, all of us been in some kind of bondage. Some of us have experienced financial bondage. Some of us have experienced physical and health-related bondage. Some of us bound by sickness, various illness. Some of us have experienced bondage, bondage on the job. Bondage politically, bondagely, economically. But when God breaks the chain, when God not only breaks the yoke, but destroys the yoke, you ought to be able to say so. Thank you, Lord, for breaking the chain. He reminds them, Israel, of their history. The psalmist remind them of what God did for them when they were in the wilderness. He remind them that when they got in their way, how God made their move. He done that in our lives too, y'all. He reminded them when they encountered difficulties, when they ran into shortages. And had some of us know about shortages. When the food got low, when the water ran out, he reminded them the fact that God was Jehovah Jireh. And somebody here know he's Jehovah Jireh, God that our provider. He remembered them told them when they got sick in the wilderness, God became Jehovah Rapha, the God who healed thee. He reminded them that just how he blessed, they were how much God had done for them. He said to Israel, if anybody ought to be able to witness and say so. And I'm talking to somebody out here that the Lord has brought you out, you ought to be able to say so. Somebody know what I'm talking about. You ought to be able to say so. Do I have a witness in here? I'm glad tonight that the Lord has. He's brought us a mighty a long way. I, I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and some lonely nights. But when I look around and I think things over, all of my good days, I weigh my bad days and I won't complain. I'm glad today, and I come to tell you tonight, you ought to say so. God has been good to you. God has made a way out of no way. He is a way maker, even in the midst of a crisis. God is still God, and God got all power in his hand. I thank God tonight that I'm able to bring you the word to let you know that God is still good. The God we serve and the redeemed of the Lord ought to say so. And I'm going to leave you now, but before I leave you, he said he delivered us from the hands of the enemy. Y'all remember, devil, we talk about in Bible study, the devil got kicked out of heaven, came to earth and became the ruler here. But my, my God sent his son, Jesus. He came down through 40 and two generations. He died that we might have a right to the tree of life. Say so he died, the old devil had rule here on earth but I'm glad when Jesus died he stayed in a grave three days and three nights but he got up with all power on that third day 
He got up with all power in his hands. I thank God today he delivered me from the hand of the enemy. No longer is the devil my enemy. That's why I can stand today, those of you who are listening to me, I want you, if you're redeemed, I want you to say so. I want you to say, the Lord has, he's been good to me. That's all I want you to tell. Say, the Lord has, he's been good to me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for blessing me tonight. Thank you, Lord, for blessing me with Galilee. Thank you, Lord, for blessing the Galilee church. Thank God for blessing my family. Thank God for blessing me. And I don't mind saying, saying so. May God bless you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We ask that you bless us and continuously. Thank you, God, for your word. Somebody will bless by your word. The redeem of the Lord. All to say so. And God, we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To everybody, happy Thanksgiving. And may God bless you. And may God keep you. Y'all enjoy the holiday. Be careful with wear your mask. And if you don't try to get in a crowd. Love you. May God bless you. And may God keep you.